Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do a disassembly on this CM621 Budgie Tem4. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy my video today, please do like and subscribe because it really helps me out. Hopefully you've seen my recent unboxing of this lovely SEMA CM621 uh, budget M4. So this is about £100 and you get uh, all plastic externals, uh, apart from the outer barrel which is metal. You also get a tight ball barrel, a 6.03 tight ball barrel which is amazing. And a MOSFET pre-installed and a quick change spring system as well on top of that. You know, what is not to love about this system? And what I wanted to do today was do a disassembly, but also just have a look at the general internals to see what they're like. So we'll make a start on that. We're gonna extend the stock out and pull the button down and remove it. Now, if you have watched the unboxing of this, you will remember that I took the back panel off and this didn't seem to want to come out. And it does just pop out if you use a screwdriver, uh, mostly because these two clips here click underneath here uh, but that basically takes part of your battery in and then goes into there and locks uh, secure what i would say is based on where they sit and the holes in here you may need to just modify and shave these down a little bit just to accommodate your wires properly in there or maybe you just want to run it like that just to be safe completely up to you you know it's uh, it's your aeg you can run it how you wish so we'll get those out of the way Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split the upper receiver down and we need a 3mm Allen key for that or a number 3 Allen key, hex key depending on where you're from and I just undid the screw, I'm just going to push it down there we go so I've pushed it out that is really stiff in there just use there we go so put those out of the way you may wish to screw them together just to keep them and then that should just pull apart so what I did there just to show you this little notch on top of the gearbox on some gearboxes will catch on the other underside of the charging handle so sometimes you have to just pull the charging handle out and just get it over the top and then it'll separate nicely now that is looking immaculate already I'm looking, I'm thinking quite impressed already with that. So we'll just slide the barrel out. That's fairly standard looking. Uh, the hop, the barrel is absolutely spotlessly clean, which is nice. The hop is just a standard M4 hop, so seems as normal one. That looks like a lot of thread lock around the front, possibly just to uh, secure it in a little bit. but. It's all looking nice and standard, adjust nicely, and a nice firm adjustment. And there is, I don't know if you can see that down there, that's fully adjusted. There is quite a bit of adjustment in there, so should be able to hop some uh, relatively heavy BBs. I personally use uh, 0 0.25 gram uh, BBs, I just find they give me the best uh, consistency in general. Now, there's the rest of the upper receiver, it just looks like you'd almost think it was a matte metal upper receiver, um, the quality of it other than it does take the odd mark and things. Uh, even the front handguard, this key mod handguard, is nice. You can see a little bit of flashing around the edges, but nice in general. Uh, and that just, you undo the screw, and that should release that uh, from in place and come off uh, and, and be free. Let's have a look and see if that's actually true. So undo the screw. And that is, that was a locking thing and it does just come off and forward and all the way out and there is your gas block that's a nylon gas block plastic screwed in there the outer barrel screw in there grub screw under there and the outer barrel come out and that looks like it is just a traditional style delta ring there that's just holding that all a normal screw on delta ring so that's a positive thread uh, to get that all together so we can get rid of this slide the hot back in and barrel and we'll uh, move on to the next bit so next thing I want to do is I want to remove the stock part stock tube and there's a Phillips head screwdriver down screw down there let's see 
So I'm going to use my extension bar to get down to that. Look at that one. Go and then and there we go. That should be all the way out now. There comes the screw, and this should now just pull, and it does just pull off. There goes the uh, retaining plate metal stop tube nicely cast I'm quite happy with that and there's it is a six position stock as well there is uh, I did forget to comment on that that is a metal sling loop as well which is better than the 60 pound ones because the, they do break easily and that's metal and there is the quick change spring system so I'm just gonna get a large flathead because there is like a groove for a flathead in there and I'm just gonna push and quart it is push and quarter turn twist and there is our spring assembly comes straight out. Now that is, I don't know if you noticed, that is a bearing based spring guide. That is really nice. That is all solid metal. Really nice and weighty and beefy. I am happy with that. So we'll get rid of the, move these bits and pieces over to the side now. Move out of the way. There we go. So next thing we're gonna do is take the base plate off the pistol grip. So there's just two Phillips head screws on here. The build quality so far has been absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really impressed with this. So if you are looking at uh, one of these budget M4s, then I would definitely consider this option over the other ones because it's got the tight bar barrel and it's got the MOSFET in it. And uh, it's obviously only a hundred pounds. Uh, so it's not gonna break the bank. Uh, obviously it gets a metal high cap mag with it as well so I'm just going to lift the red terminal uh, wire off Missed. that is well on there and then I'm going to lift this side up as well this may even actually be the new now that does look awfully like their new high speed motors that they've put in the um, platinum series so I would be surprised if they had just because this is a hundred pound cheaper but who knows uh, that does suspiciously look like their high-speed motor so in the pistol grip then we still have another two uh, Phillips head screws to take out so at the back right and the top left I'm going to try and leave those in their holes just because it makes it easier when I'm reassembling if they stay in those positions so then I'm just going to gently pull the wires through making sure not to rag them too much we need to keep the wires safe and uh, manipulate them out of their little feed holes there we go so just in case you didn't know uh, to, uh, I'll just show you here so this hole in the middle this is where your motor keys through this hole at the front there in the middle is where if you're looking at the pistol grip like that the front hole is where the red wire on a normal m4 would come up and the hole in the middle at the back is where the black wire would normally come up through so get that out of the way stand that up and uh, i'm going to get the mag release out now um, i love them for this they've put a phillips head screw in this mag catch which is really nice for me that they've done that because it just makes my life when I'm taking so much more easy if I can just take out a Phillips head screw so keep those together and we've just got two pins left so I will get the number three hex back in there and unwind that now I can see there as you probably noticed it is a blue um, piston which uh, we've seen in other uh, seamers like the 513 the one with the suppressor on the front the budget one and it generally signifies it's a much better quality um, um, piston so I'm just going to push this trigger pin back out or out bear with me 
just knocked this body pin out and this is above the trigger so the threads were on the left hand side of the receiver and the uh, bolt release also popped out while so we're doing it and that just literally slots back in like that please make sure you put that back in before you put the upper back on because the number of times i forgot and then got annoyed at myself is beyond count uh, so we're now going to lift the gearbox out just ever so gently uh, but it's not seeming to play very nice with me at the moment now this took a, a fair bit of uh, jiggling about to get it out of there and I had to sort of get my finger in and pry it forward and really yank it for it to come out obviously it is uh, plastic so it will sort of uh, flex a little bit to allow it out so there's the inside of the receiver you've got your fake selector there there's your selector on the inside this little connector that goes into the gearbox now this is looking like it's identical uh, to the uh, 513 there is the MOSFET under there I'm absolutely certain it's the same one we'll have a look at that those are metal bushings as well that's impressive the cylinder looks spotless that's immaculate um, I'm not entirely sure what this extra piece is for possibly just uh, spacing out the uh, the body and stopping it compressing too much I'm not entirely sure but we'll get into the gearbox now so it is all Phillips head screws by the looks of it so I'm just going to take them out one at a time and I'm going to line them up roughly in the order that we took them out This screw here is different to the others. It's worth taking it out. It's not necessarily essential to take it out, but it will stop any issues when you're splitting the gearbox if we do take this one out. So it's on a different, a smaller uh, Phillips head to take that one out and make sure you know which one that one is and keep it slightly separate to the others. Although if you're arranging the screws in the right order, it's not as big an issue. So I've now removed all the screws from the gearbox and there you can see they are arranged on there. So we're going to split the gearbox now and see what it's like inside. So I'm just going to get my fingers in the back there and gently pull, make sure, there we go. Come on. Now that's all kind of stuck together. So got some metal bushings in there it looks like somebody's done a half decent shim job if you don't remember the shims are the little metal washers that we put on the top and bottom of the spindles of the uh, gear set and that's to raise them and lower them to stop them rubbing a little bit although it does look like there is some rubbing going off around here um, in that gear set so maybe a little bit more shimming might be needed there is the MOSFET in all its glory which is just a little micro switch on onto a circuit board um, it does look identical from what I can tell to the ones in the Platinum series um, that is genuinely quite nice actually I'm quite impressed with that um, That is pretty, uh, pretty nice quality actually. So the gear set itself looks like a fairly standard uh, SEMA gear set. I would say that I'm probably going to need to re-shim this at some point because it's not looking amazing shimming. Uh, that said, when I fired it, it didn't sound whiny or screechy or scratchy or anything. Um, the blue plastic is uh, considered to be uh, better quality. Um, and their MP5s, oh no, it's, yeah, SEMA MP5s have done the blue edition where it's got the blue plastic parts. So I believe this is some sort of reinforced plastic that they've put in there as well. It does seem fairly rig rigid and things. In there, I'll check the, uh, got the blue nozzle there. I'll just check the compression. That is loose in there, but it's very well lubricated. So it's got a nice O-ring and rubber pad on the inside. There doesn't appear to be much of a compression. I'm sure when it's firing it will work nicely, but I can get that 
all the way in without anything at all that may be to do with the front coming out and nothing else um, but nice solid looking piston no signs of wear yet at all on there uh, and it is well lubricated in there as well so um, possibly a little bit of a shimming needs doing possibly not in general good quality build a hundred pound for an m4 with a tight bar barrel and a mosfet and potentially what looks like a high speed motor i'm unsure on that i would still upgrade the motor anyway but a hundred pound to get you some of the things that people would consider doing anyway is absolutely excellent value i hope this has been helpful to you please do like and subscribe and i will see you next time bye